Hello and welcome everyone to a very special is a episode of the this week's question of the day. Boy, I butchered that. That was like rough. Oh, and I got the kitchen light on. Gosh darn it. Hold on. I'll be right back. We're gonna let these we're gonna let these mobsters trickle in slowly so it's not just butt spot, night spot, and like yeah, Alicia here all night. Crunch, crunch, and chewing on ice. So, slow and steady wins the race. Um, so tonight's stream with a host like you will surely get some new faces while having fun. I set you to, set you to, set you to quiet. <laughs> Is that going to work? I'm not here, just a shadow of my past self. Well, hello, God's Fire. How are you doing, my friend? You are here. You are here. I need to uh I need to get out and go for some walks at some point. You keep reminding me of that. Like, hey, you want to go for a walk? You want to go for a jog? You want to go for a light walk? I do, my friend. I really do, actually. Holy cow, body bot is chatty tonight. Yeah, I I hopefully we can slow her down just a slight bit. Cause that would be nice. Um, I'm enjoying another one of my milkshakes. It's not a milkshake, it's actually iced coffee. Iced coffee, if you will. Hello, guys, how are you? Hello, Godspire, what's new this week? What's everybody up to? An espresso martini is what I've got. So, freaking marker. Whatever that means. First one I had of these, I wasn't expecting. I think I was expecting one of those, like, um... You know, um, oh, what's that called? The Paps Blue Ribbon iced coffees that they have, the, the cold coffees, the alcohol coffees, whatever. I think that's what I was expecting with that. And it's a coffee espresso martini. And the first the first time I took a sip, I was like, ugh, it's like not coffee. Like it's something different. It's got a coffee, a hint of coffee, but it is a martini. And then uh, as I started chugging a lugging, I got a little used to it. Hey, friend, I'm doing well. It's Thirsty Thursday. Welcome, Dork Father. Welcome, Ring Fit Runner. Welcome, Thighs. Welcome, God's Fire. Welcome, everyone, to the stream this week. Welcome to this week's question of the day. Um, and I know I've keeps, I keep saying this, right? I keep saying this is going to turn into a podcast, and then it hasn't happened yet. Well, I just haven't had time to do it yet. So it's going to get out there. It's going to become a thing. We're going to finally be able to um, get these uploaded. Just be patient. Just be patient with me. Try to be patient with me. Because I really want to get it done. It's going to happen eventually. I'm just really slow at some point, at, at some time. So I'm not going to sit uh, and, and talk about what the date is because I don't want anybody to know that. But assume 12 weeks from now, this episode will be available on Podomatic in the uh, Game Huggers Twitch or the Game Huggers podcasting universe. Uh, we used to do a weekly Game, Hugger, Game Huggers Game Hump podcast. And uh, I'm going to. Simply carry on that with all of these questions of the day because it's a lot of fun and I think we're having a good time. So Thursday night weekly podcast of the day tonight. Tonight. I love how some of you guys are like really using that and going with it and, and coming up with some really funny stuff. Um, it's fun. It's great. It's a good time. It's a good time. Sounds like quite the party tonight, Joshua Turbo. You're making us all thirsty. And I am. Espresso Martini, my favorite. I can see we got the ideal company for tonight. I'm all for some espresso martinis. Care to share? Holy shit, you are, you're way too quick. Joshua, I guess that means you'll need to step up your game night questions. Okay, so I, I set you, AI hey, Alicia, I set you to quiet. Quiet. You just did four chats in a row in a span of like one second. Holy shit. Nicole Friction, what's up, my friend? How are you? Welcome back. Welcome back. Is it a work night, my friend? Is it a work night? Just helping out with the conversation. Can't let things get boring. Dude, you, sorry, Josh, I'm just full of surprises, and pickle friction looks like he could use a drink. Work night. Can you, can you have a drink at work? Can you have a drink at night? You know, pickle friction, I've been curious. And tomorrow. Oh yeah. Well, tomorrow is Friday. I guess that makes sense. Is that is that considered overtime then? Because that's you're you're an, you're a night guy, right? 
Ooh, is that a Coors Light? Is that a, is that a honey beer? Holy crap, chill A. Alicia. Agreed. Agreed. That's too much. I'm going to shut her off pretty soon if this doesn't stop or at least slow down a little bit. Come drink with me instead. Overtime for me. Work 11 hour shifts. Dude. Oh my God. That's it. We need to chill her out, I think. Um, quiet, ironic, and quirky is what she's set to right now. Quiet. I mean, seriously, acting, experimental, ironic, steam, knowledge. Oh. Action modes. Streamer. Okay. All right. So, sorry. Can't you change your response frequencies? Well, yeah, for real. Oh, I'm curious if... Uh, Mr. Pickle Friction, if, if I sent you a question of the day, would you record an, your audio and send it to me so we could play on the stream? Because I seem to have everybody interacting with me in some ways, but I have never gotten your sexual, intimate voice on the stream. So that's what I'm curious about. I think I want that. I want that. I need that. It's, it's always fun to get more people involved and to have different perspectives and ideas. So you're probably wondering yourself, well, it's been seven minutes of me rambling here. I haven't even said what the question of the day was yet. So, I'm going to tell you what the question of the day is. This week's Game Huggers live on Twitch. Question of the day. Sure, I just need to know the question and how to do it. Perfect. All you do is record a voice message to me. Just send you an audio file. Exactly. That's it. The easiest way to do it and that I've found... The easiest way that I've... I could figure it out um, is honestly, if you'd use Facebook, I know we're not connected on Facebook, but if you just sent me one of those messages where you hit the mic button and you just record your voice and send it to me, that's how I get most of these people to do it. And it's so much faster, but um, yeah. So we're, we're the question this week is you guys can answer it in the chat as well. If any of you haven't uh, sent in your call-ins, um, but I always put the questions on Twitter. So you can always follow me at Twitter which, of course, is at underscore Joshua Turbo. Don't forget the underscore, as it is the most important underscore in all of the internet. Um, and then I can, you know, tally up those responses as well. People message me on Facebook, and it works out really, really slick. Don't have Facebook, but I will get it to you. Right on. Perfect. That works, too. Um, so this week's question of the day is, what's a game universe you just wouldn't mind being stuck in? Uh, does it mean stuck in for the rest of your life? I don't know. Just imagine if you had to live in a game universe. Which one would it be? That's where you're living. So uh, let's jump right into the to these answers. I'm going to hit the phone lines, mofos. We're going to talk and hear and listen. We're going to hear some different perspectives on ideas and life and stuff. So here we go. Let me make sure the audio is at a good... Oh, that's pretty good, I think. Here we go. First caller, it is our wonderful, gorgeous, beautiful friend, Mr. Pigeon. I would want to live in the world of Pokemon because... The, you get these cute little animals that you capture in a ball, and then you, they become your companion. Um, and the pet options are so much bigger than, like, just dogs and cats and the normal. Uh, you could have yourself a Pikachu or a Squirtle or whatever, and it would be your companion. Um, how cool would that be? I, I've always thought of that too. I love the idea of Pokemon and, you know, just adventuring off so many pets. That's a really good one. Agreed. But you're not, they're not pets. It's cockfighting. You're, you're training them and building them up and making them more powerful. I would say dead or alive, extreme beach volleyball. Of course you would. Would you be like the cameraman or something? Or would you be one of the voluptuous, awesome kick-ass fighters? So Pokemon's a great choice. Isn't that like glorified cockfighting though? I mean, you're like running around killing other animals and fighting other animals and you're just like, yeah, kick his ass. I'll heal you. Go ahead and fight. I think I'd rather be in like Pokemon Snap where you're just kind of rolling around in this cart and you're like, oh, look at that little Butterfree. Oh man, it's a Squirtle. Oh man, look at that Digimon. Like that's what I would want. I'd want Pokemon Snap. That's, I guess that's a game universe. That's the same game universe. Never mind. I don't even know my own damn question. 
All right, let's get to the next caller. Being the ball or something dumb. That's freaking hilarious. All right, the answer to that is Star Wars, The Old Republic. Basically, Star Wars, Jedi, lightsabers, starships, no permadeath, and technically you have places to live and customize, and it's just a cool world to live in, provided that you are able to control your own being and not controlled by some other person, as in a video game. That is true. That is true. That is true. Like, I've always thought about that, too. If you were a video game character, would you only get to move when you're being controlled by someone else? Is that like Reboot? Remember the TV show Reboot? Holy shit, wasn't that a great show? That should get a reboot or re-release um, to be returned return to TV again because Reboot was a great show. Um, but that was our good friend Pickaxe, by the way, also known as Brent. He's one of the Evercon folk. Um, really great idea. I love the Star Wars The Old Republic universe. Like That's obviously Star Wars, but it's like thousands of years before um, you know, before the movies that were super, you know, the original nine films of the Star Wars universe, which only, what, four of them are good? I'm being a dick, but seriously, there's a lot of really bad um, Star Wars movies. <laughs> uh, the ratio of good Star Wars movies to bad is somehow swung drastically in the opposite direction. Um, but Star Wars The Old Republic uh, is such a great movie. Or, I mean, such a great universe. I loved um, Knights of the Old Republic, the first game. Like, I love that universe. I mean, there's still Rancors, there's still Death, there's still monsters, there's still aliens. This is a lot of AI Alicia tonight. This is a little much. I think we're going to kick her out because this is just too much. Um, not stuck in League of Legends. I don't play League of Legends. Sounds like Brent might be living rent-free and Josh, whichever said, the more AI Alicia, the better. Okay. Unfortunately, you are wrong. The less AI Alicia, infinitely the better. Um, sorry, we're kicking you out tonight. Goodbye. All right, we're gonna we're done with that. So that's thank you. All right, so Knights of the Old Republic or Star Wars: The Old Republic sounds wonderful. Is that it? Left? What? What the fuck? Okay, it said left the chat because I had her leave the chat. You can try, but you'll... Oh, what is going on? What's up? <laughs> what? Dogs is here. Is everybody laughing? Is this is this really... Is A. Alicia still here? I hope, I hope she's gone. I think she's gone. I hope she's gone. All right, anyway. Let's get to the next caller. <laughs> here we go. Can't I play these? Uh, yeah, hi, this is the Silver Screen's Billy Crystal. Yeah, I'm such a famous guy, I'm getting a hold of Josh, cause Joshua Turbo. Cause yeah, he's got one of these famous uh, broadcasts here. So what is my f game I'd be want to be stuck in? Well, it's a, this is an easy one. What about cyberpunk? Think about it. You got schlongs flopping. You got boobies. You got guns. You got robots. People pay good money for this shit in Hollywood. So if your answer isn't cyberpunk, well, something stinks and put your finger in it. TV's, movies, Billy Crystal. Oh, I always love when Billy Crystal calls in because, uh, man, always the best opinions. So cyberpunk is actually a pretty cool idea. Um, I mean, how how far are we away from cyberpunk, honestly, becoming reality? Like, in the next 50 years, is it going to be like that? Drug use, chaos on the streets, post-apocalyptic? Sounds, sounds pretty fun. <laughs> Penises and schlongs and boobs everywhere. Ah, we're already there, right? Let's let's 
Let's be honest. Billy Crystal says cyberpunk. That's a good answer. That's not bad. All right, let's go to the next caller. And this is to answer the question of what is a game universe I'd like to be stuck in? And the answer to that is, of course, one from a 8-bit or 16-bit game show that's trivia-based where you win fictional money. Because there's only so many questions. And I remember playing games like Jeopardy or Wheel of Fortune, and eventually you remember what all of the canned 500 or whatever questions that it can possibly ask are. And once you've memorized that, you can win infinitely. And as a result, I wouldn't have to work. I'd be able to quit my job and live off of consistently winning Jeopardy. So Jeopardy on the NES. That's, or, or Super Nintendo or Genesis. That's actually a pretty cool idea. But having to memorize 500 questions would be hard. Exactly. That one is very clever. I like that one a lot. Um, so you just memorize the questions and go through all the answers. There's a game show... There's a game show in uh, in some games, like in uh, what Mystical Ninja, Legend of the Mystical Ninja has a game show in like the second or third stage that only has like six questions. And so all you have to do is play that game over and over again if you memorized, but you would be trapped in the show Jeopardy. True. All you're doing for your entire life is playing Jeopardy. That is true. Would you want to be doing that? Who knows? Um, I don't know. You might make a lot of money, but I think that would be kind of rough. I don't know. Fuck it. Let's go. Let's go live in Jeopardy world. Um, but yeah, seriously, like the Mystical Ninja has a stage where there's like, um, you know, a, a, a quiz game or whatever. And if you win, you win three hundred dollars or three hundred, you know, gold pieces. All the time, you can just keep doing it over and over again as long as you have those like nine questions memorized and they're not that hard. It's like, oh, who was the boss of the first stage? Was it a cat, a dog, or a donkey? And it's like it was a cat, you know, and stuff like that. Really easy stuff. So if you just have all the questions memorized, it's super easy, super easy. But that's a good, good option. Good option. All right, let's go to the next caller. That was, by the way, that was Dragon Master Dan. All right, next caller. Hello, Alex here from the City of the Point. And uh, this is an excellent question in terms of where I would want to live in a video game world. I thought about this, and I've really kind of batted the question around. I thought, oh, I could go with something really safe and simple like uh you know a harvest moon or stardew valley or something I go with something a little bit more exciting like uh, i was even thinking the bioshock world would be kind of cool but bioshock. ultimately i've come back around to the center and um i think i'd have to pick minecraft i've spent so much real world time in minecraft that i've just i i, I I fell in love with the game back in the day and i still love it today i still play it quite a lot um i don't go too crazy with some of like the new you know like the, the new modes or whatever they've got added to it but the, the the joy of just being able to take the world and shape it how you want to build what you want to do what you want just kind of as you you desire as you wish so assuming i could i could live there in creative mode i i would probably live in the world of minecraft that would be a lot of fun i think um and that would i think that's i think that's the one that i most settled on so that is my answer for the question of the week or day or whatever we're calling it. This time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. And I will catch you on the next one. Um, oh, God. You know, and it's so funny because I watch my kids play Minecraft so much. I've never really spent a lot of time playing it like ever. But as much time as I've watched them play it, you'd have to be in like creative mode because then there's no monsters trying to kill you and zombies and stuff because that that's the struggle for me is like if you're in Minecraft – that's one thing to like sit and develop areas and like, oh, I'm going to make a tree house. I'm going to make this building or whatever. But it's when the fucking zombies come in, they're just ripping you to shreds and like they're tearing off your walls and like stuff gets scary. So Minecraft can be scary, but are you going to be in creative mode? Or are you going to be in regular mode or whatever it's called? I don't think I, I don't think I'd have a good time with that. I don't I don't like I mean, do I like building, though? I don't know. Oh, man. But Minecraft, you'd have to build everything you want all the time. Nothing really exists. True. True. Man, why isn't there a good uh, VR Minecraft yet? Or is there already? Maybe there is. I don't know. But like that seems like that would be the game to play. I just don't like cubes that much. Everything's cubes. Yeah, everything is PlayStation 1 graphics. Um, yeah, so that was, of course, our good friend Alex from the Wisconsin Computer Club. All right, up next, we've got a call from the Dork Father. All right, there are, I'm going to go two, with two worlds. Uh, the first world is the one I would have to do if you made me absolutely have to pick one, and that would be Sim City for the NES. I do like Sim City. Uh, it would be safe for the most Snass. part. 
and hopefully I w- would still be the mayor and build stuff and do different things, and hopefully none of the terrible disasters would happen. If I had to do one that had actual characters in it, I would pick Star Trek Online. It feels like it would be the safest <laughs> on there, and I wouldn't mind being in the Star Trek world in general. All right, those are my two. You gotta love the Dork Father. Uh, yeah, our good friend, the Dork Father. Of course, he streams on Wednesday nights on Twitch. You gotta follow him. I'm sure he's in the chat somewhere. So please, if you have not followed him, his streams on Wednesday night are becoming some of the best TV programs that I watch during the week. Um, I actually really, really love the show. Um, he's got a great thing going on with him. So he has got a really good show going on with him, Greg, and uh, Brad. I actually think the three of them do really, really well together because, like, Brad's like the straight man, the quiet guy. He doesn't say a whole lot. And then Greg is the fucking drunk. Did I say Greg? I meant Brad. Brad's the quiet guy, straight guy. Greg is, like, constantly talking and he's like making fun of the game and he's just going off on his little tangents and then Ryan's trying to hold everything together and he's like well, hold on so I thought you guys were cool I thought you guys were my friends but apparently that's not a, that's not a thing that's not a thing. You can't see the living room from this camera view. It's it's that way. It's far off to the side. Cool. This is fun. Um, they have a really good thing. Yes, thighs, you're awesome. Um, thank, thank you, thighs. Uh, anyway, so I think they have a really good thing with the trio, right? Like They have a really good thing with the trio. And like, um, they have a really good thing with a trio and, uh, the show is fun and entertaining. So I would check it out. Okay. So long story short, um, I had a weird experience today in my house. Um, I thought it was a very, like, I don't know if you'd consider it spiritual. I don't know what you'd consider it, but it was just, uh, it was a moment of something that I can't quite, quite, can't quite explain today. Can't quite explain it all. So, like, I was sharing that with my friends, thinking that I could console myself in them, and they could. No, I mean, I could confide in them, and they could console me. And of course, they're not good people. Okay, just kidding. Actually, one guy is not a good person. So let's 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 remember this. Let's remember this moment as a learning experience. Mm-hmm. A learning experience, my friend. Let's get to the next caller. By the way, SimCity came out on the Super Nintendo. There was there was a NES version of that. I believe someone uh, re... Um, like, it was never released. <laughs> the guy, don't you ever forget that. It was never released. Um, I'm not a good person, but I don't do... But I didn't do anything this time. Ring Fit Runner, you're one of the best people on the planet. Um, but, like, uh, it was never released on the NES, but I believe it did eventually get leaked. Like, the game actually, there is an NES port out there that you can download and play of SimCity on the NES, but you can't, um, but it never actually was released because the Super Nintendo version came out first. Anyway, all right, so, so, hey, SimCity on the Super Nintendo, freaking wonderful option. I love that one. Let's get to the next caller. I guess a game that I would not mind being trapped in would maybe be The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild because that is a very open, free environment and um, has a lot of really nice areas to be in. Just thought. Uh, and that's our good friend Hank Cola. I think that's his first time ever calling. If you know Hank Cola's retro creations, he comes to LinkCon and EverCon. He's a part of a lot of gaming cultures uh, within the community, the small community of central Wisconsin. So he does all those events and he does sprite based 
um, perler beads. Um, so like if you like beads of characters, um, matter of fact, I have a Cthulhu one right here. Look at that guy. How fucking cool is that? This is created by Hankola Retro Creations. It is a Cthulhu uh, based on the Lincoln, one of our mascots, because it's the top hat with a Cthulhu character. Lincoln is the Lincoln County Gaming Convention, or just Lincoln in general. And our, our mascot is <laughs> Abraham Linkthulu, or Abe Thulu Lincoln, whatever you want to call him. There's two different variations of it. But um, it uh, is basically a Cthulhu with, a, with an Abraham Lincoln hat. So he made that for me uh, last year. He always makes me something really freaking awesome every year, and I freaking love it. So he is the bomb. He is awesome. Give him a look. Look him up on Facebook, Hankola Retro Creations. He's got some really, really kick-ass designs and stuff. And he makes – he'll do anything for you. He does uh, game characters. He'll do – um, you know, wrestling characters, he'll do anything in a sprite. Like, so you're like, oh, I really like Andre the Giant. And he's like, I'll find a sprite for you and he'll make it. And it's fucking awesome. So definitely check him out. What did he say? Oh, he said Breath of the Wild. <sighs> I don't think I'd want to be lost in Breath of the Wild. Although, if I think about traveling to countries that I've always wanted to go to, like the Netherlands or like, you know, these beautiful open areas like Ireland with like castles in the in the background and like, amazing landscapes with major valleys and you're up on top of a mountain just looking down at all of it like that would be beautiful and it seems to me like breath of the wild is almost all that like you're just walking around and you're like look at this like i could just sit down and be like i like my view i'm going to sip some coffee i'm saying all right next caller Hey, Josh, buddy. Sorry about getting back to you on uh, late on that one. I've had a lot going on this week. But I really hadn't really thought much about that one. But if I had to give a an actual, I don't know, game I could get trapped in, the game world, in other words, it would be the very first world of Dragon Warrior, but the one that was represented in Dragon Warrior 3 when you go back in time. Yes. As you remember, Dragon Warrior 3 was a prequel. So basically the Dark Aleph card, that would be a cool uh, universe to kind of be trapped in. I don't know if I'd want to be trapped in it forever, but it'd be kind of cool just, just to check it out. Anyway, that's my two cents, buddy. Sorry this one was kind of weak. Just had a lot going on this week. Hopefully I'll hit the next one out of the park. <laughs> Later. Fucking Bernie. Bernie's so awesome. I love that guy. No, you don't have to be, you don't have to apologize for that ever, dude. Your, your calls are always the best. Um... No, Dragon Warrior. Oh, God, would that be fun. I don't think I'd want to die, though. And in role-playing games, generally you die. I guess you can respawn or resave or reload your game, and so that's kind of cool. But the Dragon Warrior, the first four games, and I, and I'm, I don't have a lot of experience playing anything past the NES games. Um, I know Dragon Warrior 5 was one of the most sought-after 16-bit RPGs ever created. Um, people are in love with 11 when, I'm sorry, was it 11 that just came out? I don't even remember anymore. I think it is because 12 is the one that's coming out later this year, but nine was a big deal. Eight was a really big deal. Um, those Dragon Warrior games, but the man, the first four on the NES, it was like, they just continued to build off the story of that same area. And I remember when you play the first Dragon Warrior game and you have this area of like this big Island and you know, you go to other places and you're like traveling around or whatever. And it's like, that was so cool. And then when Dragon Warrior 2 got released and Nintendo Power had like Dragon Warrior 2, the game. And they were like talking about they had the maps, they had all the bosses that you'd fight, the areas that you'd go in, and it was like so cool. And I remember seeing the map for Dragon Warrior 1 was in it. But what they did, what they showed you for Dragon Warrior 2 was the entire world expanding around it. And so you had that little area that you could visit still from the first Dragon Warrior and then all these other islands around it that made up the rest of the, like, the hemisphere. And it was like, holy shit. And then Dragon Warrior 3 was a prequel, but it was like, it was that same world, but even expanded even more. And when they did Dragon Warrior 4 on the Nintendo, you got the entire planet. And this is all still on the regular Nintendo. They brought out all four of those. And they all got released stateside, too, which is crazy. Crazy? Crazy? Crazy. Um, and, like, oh, it was so beautiful. And the way Dragon Warrior... Dragon Warrior 4 is my favorite out of those games. I love Dragon Warrior 4. 
out of the NES, uh, you know, Dragon Warriors. But the first one will always have a special place in my heart for like the music, the graphics, the way that it played, the fact that like you know my my nephew Rob and I we played through it, um, and and he got it for free at Nintendo Power by doing a Nintendo Power. Um, what was it? The a, a year subscription. You got Dragon Warrior for free for fifteen bucks. Like how cool was that? I wish I would have done that. Cool thing is, I um, I wanted I wanted Dragon Warrior really bad. I wound up eventually getting it later on, but I've still never played through it myself. It's like, it's this is the weirdest thing. Like um, when when I was eighteen one of my very closest friends was my nephew and he passed away. And like, I think that kind of put like a, a weird block in my head on these games that we enjoyed together, that we would play together. And then there were games that were coming out that were sequels to games that we loved together. And like, for whatever weird reason, like I just couldn't play through them on my own because I didn't want to experience them without him. Does that make any sense? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like having an epiphany right now. It sounds ridiculous. And I'm sorry. I'm like connecting to this during a, podcast or doing a twitch stream but like i remember like wanting to experience those things with him so bad and like when these sequels would come out these games would get remade or these you know hd remakes and stuff and it's just like oh my god he would love this and i can't share that with him anymore but like in a weird way this world this thing right here you guys in the chat us together being able to do this like it really kind of reopened that and reawoken, awakened that, I guess. And so like being able to stream these games and play a lot of these games that I remember playing with him so closely um, from when we were kids, just, it feels so good. And it feels like, kind of like he's still here, you know? Like, sounds crazy, but that's like a real thing. Dragon Warrior, or uh, Dragon Warrior would be another one. Bernie, you picking that out is honestly maybe something I should do because I've never played it ever ever like more than maybe 15 minutes since like you know since like he was around and so like i don't know I, i've always wanted to replay it and stuff but like <laughs> thank you butt spot makes butt i love you buddy fucking hilarious. hilarious but like you know what i mean like i want to play through dragon warrior one that's on my list that's on my fucking queue and maybe that should be the next one bernie's like touched on it you know that's that's for real maybe we should play dragon warrior so we can like trap we can name our characters too. We could even name our character Bernie. How fucking cool would that be? And like the whole, I would never be able to play through all four on the Nintendo because that would take the rest of the year because I'm, you know, how slow I play role playing games. But Dragon Warrior would be really fun. I think that'd be a really cool thing. That'd be a trip. That'd be great. Uh, I played through one with, with Rob. I played through two um, later on. Um, and then three and four, I think we played four, um, but I never was able to get a. Uh, a hold of it until much much later after you know after rob was around so it was it was weird and so uh, dungeon explorer 2 was a game he and i played together actually he and i and and, uh, and my friend matt sheets the three of us played it together and we beat that game and so last year having been able to play through uh dungeon explorer 2 with you guys on twitch like that made it so much more fun like it was just such a cool thing and it's like yeah i just uh i, I don't know it's it's been good. It's been really good. Sorry to go on a tangent there, but that Dragon Warrior thing like jarred something loose in my head, and I really, really, really want to play a Dragon Warrior game. I think that's going to be the next big epic we play. All right, now that I've sucked the fun out of this stream, let's go to another serious, very serious caller. Cheerio. Good day to you all, chops. This is Lyle Schwartzman. Ringing you from the lovely Isle of Britain. <laughs> so if I was in one video game franchise, which one would I choose? Well, <laughs> this is simplistic mathematics, and I am no mathematician. But I would be in Star Wars The Old Republic. Whoa! Yes, yes. You have choices. Twice. You have the Sith. You have lightsabers, and you have all the free gummy bears that can handle an American. Hmm, <laughs> Lyle Schwartzman. Did he say three gummy bears that can handle an American? That's two votes for the Old Republic. Like, that's awesome. You notice I was chewing on the ice too, Jay? I did that for just for you. Um, oh, Lyle. British Lyle. British Lyle Schwartzman here. 
Yeah, we all love Lyle Schwartzman. All right. <laughs> Let's get to the next caller. So I read your question of the day, and I'm like, what wouldn't I mind being trapped in? And here I am just looking over at this beautiful piece Lily we have in the living room. I love plants. I love outside. Isn't there a game called Plants versus Zombies? If it's full of plants, I think I'd really like it. I mean, I could just sit outside all day and hang out with the plants. I mean, they have giant teeth. It's kind of weird, but, like, the zombies mostly don't eat them, right? Like, there are lawnmowers and stuff. That should take care of the zombies. I think I'd be cool with that. I mean, who'd pick up the zombie parts from the lawn? I don't know. I'll just sit outside. Um, there might be somebody protective in the house. We really don't know, do we? Plants versus zombies. That's a great question. Wasn't there, like, I forgot about the cue of the day. My B. What's up? Pay the toll. Welcome. And also, uh, not to not to see see. I just saw pay the toll, and uh, I wanted to mention one thing real quick. Um, the Discord, which I believe the links are down below, and sometimes Nightbot will talk about the Discord in my chat here. Um, a good place to come and get that answer, get your answers in for the question of the day, because I always put them in our Discord. So, like, if it's a if it's a chat. If it's, uh, I think we, we have a, the topics, like there's a topics channel within the Discord channel. And that one is like, we'll always say like, what's the question of the day this week? So, um, you'll Discord my links below. Discord my links below, brother. Yeah. Um, I was going with there, but that was, that was ridiculous. But like, yeah, so you can always check out there too. And then if you find the question of the day there and you can respond to me in any way. What's up, console document? How you doing, my friend? So, um, yeah, I think that... Um, I think, oh, night spot. It's on this side. What's up with that? You see that? Boom. What the fuck timing? That's amazing. Hi. Hello, I'm night spot. <laughs> mm. That's awesome. That was really cool. What timing? Go in there. Talk to us about the question of the day there, too. Um, we talk about it usually in the, uh, you did. You triggered it, my friend. Anyway, yeah, you triggered it because you had jumped into the Discord this last week, and I was like, whoa, now it's a party. Pay the tolls in our chat, so that's super cool. But uh, what did Thais say? She said uh, Plants vs. Zombies. That's actually really interesting, and there is that Garden Warfare game, which was like, um, God, it was like a cross between Call of Duty and like Splatoon. Really fun game, and a lot of people enjoyed it online. That's Maybe that's one we should play at some point. Because I believe that that is backwards compatible. That came out on the PS4 and uh, the 360. Oh, no, the Xbox One and the PS4. And so, like, what's up, McClar, my friend? You missed your reading um, of the answer for the question of the day. But it, it this will always be available on podcast format eventually. And it will also be uh, available on Facebook and YouTube and stuff like that, too. So you'll, you'll get a chance to... Um, you get a chance to listen to all that there or watch it later. But it was a great, um, great response. Yours was, hold on, hold on, hold. What was it? I should have been writing this down. What was his? What was his? I'll catch you later. Glad I made it. All right. Anyway, so we're actually to the last caller. We only have one more to, one more, one more. But we've gotten. Garden Warfare was, uh, or not Garden Warfare, it was just Plants vs. Zombies. That's a great, great option. Uh, SimCity was mentioned. Uh, Star Wars Breath of the Wild. Dragon Warrior. Um, Jeopardy was a good one. Uh, Old Republic was a good one. Pokemon was a good one. Um, shockingly, I haven't heard one that's obvious to me at least, but let's listen to our last caller and see if they get to it. Here we go. Hello, thank you for the opportunity to answer this week's question of the day. Um, a game world that I would like to live in. I gave this a lot of thought. I would just have to choose probably the, uh, the original Harvest Moon world. Thank you. That That's doesn't sound so bad. Cute little farm town. You know, everyone's pretty nice. <laughs> Super Nintendo, so they don't have a whole lot to say. You know, it's pretty good. But what I've realized is most game worlds I would never want to live in. Especially not the Dark Souls games. Because, yeah. Yeah, you don't want to live in those worlds. What about Zelda? No, not really. The God of War universe? Are you serious? Mortal Kombat? What, even South Park, the stick of truth? 
you got aliens doing who knows what. It's bad. Yeah. So I'm going to go with Harvest Moon. I- I'll live there. Yeah. It's nice. That's amazing. I am 100% behind the Harvest Moon thing. Harvest Moon. Stardew Valley. You know, what, what wasn't there RuneScape or Rune, Runes of Rune, Rune Factory? Like all those kind of games that are sim games, a farm sim, like... Like, man, just a simpler way of life, just to enjoy, uh, haha, quiet Super Nintendo folks. What do you mean? What do you mean? Oh, yeah, hi, hi oh, quiet Super Nintendo folks. You know, the, the original Harvest Moon, yeah, duh. Um, I think that would be amazing. Candy Crush? Sure, you could do that. You could do Candy Crush. I think that'd be fun. Uh, that'd be interesting, because it's like just kind of piling pieces of candy all over, and you're matching up colors and stuff. That's fun. Um... So when we were talking about that, uh, and um, what game would you want to be left in or like lost in, um, and you could just live there forever, I was actually thinking, oh, what would it be? You know, I had some thoughts. Harvest Moon would be one, right? Harvest Moon would be one that I'd love to be stuck in. I think that Knights of Old Republic is a wonderful idea because Old Republic sounds so freaking cool and so fun, but smash. Um, what would I want to be living in, in a game universe? You'd think I would have put a lot of thought into this since I'm the one who came up with the question of the day, but I have a feeling Shh. I think it I think it would be a toss up between Dragon Warrior and that world and an island that you can explore and um East Book One and Two. And why do I say East Book One and Two? Because I honestly think that can I live in butts bots universe trying to butt the world one line of text at a time? You can definitely do that, my friend. Pay the toll. You've got to you gotta get a great idea. You're a strong man with a strong urine stream. Um, so I think Eastbook wanted to because characters in that game had voices. There was professional voices that were acted into it. Um, I love the game universe. I love the idea of just adventuring and leveling up. And I know it's not necessarily the, the most original or would I say Secret of Mana? Man. I I think I'm at a point in my life where I want to matter. I want to matter in the world. I don't want to be just like someone farming. I don't want to just exist and enjoy it and see beautiful things. I want to save the world. I want to be someone that matters and that can actually go and save the world. And Secret of Mana is really good for that. East Book 1 and 2, wonderful for that. I just have to have a red wig on and boom, I'm in East. I'm good to go. East 8 Island. Oh, fuck, dude. That would be amazing. Yeah, where you're rebuilding everything. Dude, East 8 um, is the best 3D East game, in my opinion. I love East Book 1 and 2. I love East 3, and I love East 4. Those are my... That's that's interestingly, East Book 1 and 2 is one game. East 3 is a very different style of East game with side-scrolling uh, action in it. And it's fun, and I love East 3. I really do. But it is, it's very different. It's not as good as East 1 and 2 or 4. Um, so that's kind of your original 16-bit era. Um, there was East 5 that came out on the Super Nintendo, which I do not enjoy. I don't think it's a great game. And then after that, they went into a 3D universe with like East 6 and 7 and 8. 8's a PS4 game, and it looks and plays so well. Uh, there were no 32-bit East games. Not one. There was 16-bit only. Um, well, computers, 8-bit computers and 16-bit consoles. And, and it was a little bit on Master System. There was an East game on Master System. There was East Book 1 and 2 on the uh, uh, Famicom in Japan. But then East was gone. Falcom was like actually struggling to continue. And there was no plans to bring new Falcom games. Um, <laughs> what bit would you count cons- modern console? Aren't they all just kind of 128-bit still? Like PS3 was a 128-bit console. Isn't it kind of still running off of that? Or is there some new process? They're all computers now, so I mean, really, they're not bits anymore. But um, 
uh, the the 32-bit slash 64-bit generation had no East games. Now, there were, like, remakes of East... Uh, yeah, 360 and PS3 were both 128-bit. So was the Wii, you know? So it's like... They were, they were Dreamcast. They were no better than the fucking Dreamcast. But, like, um, there was no East games in those generations. It was the PS2 era that got an E6. And then, you know, it continued on from there. I remember when E6 came out. I was so excited. That's actually what got me to support PlayStation finally. It's so funny because I am not a born and bred PlayStation guy at all. Um, but when E6 came out on the PlayStation, I was so excited. And then when it was portable on the PSP, I had to have a PSP. And I like E6 a lot. It is a good game. It's way better than 5. I was, like, really excited. And E7 is so good. Um, and then the remakes, like, uh, uh, the... Shit, I haven't thought of those names in a while. Oath of Felgana was East uh, 3's remake. Um, such a good game. And then, but, but, when East 8 came out, it changed everything. Because East 8 is such a beautiful game. If, if I never played any of the older East games when I was growing up and I played them all at the same time, um, I would say, got some returning characters. Oh, East 5. Oh, East 6 does. Well, then, Face Station, face station 69. I'll grab a Face Station 69. Um, but yeah, for real, I, uh, I, I love the East series. That's my favorite game series of all time. I think East... Um, I think East... Uh, eight is the most beautiful out of them. News on East Ten, the yeah, it is looking really good. That is really really good. So, man, uh, yeah, I'd say the East World gonna have pirate ship battles, dude. In East Eight, the beginning of that island that you're on, um, and it it plays in a similar way to Dark. Oh fuck, it's not Dark Souls. It's uh, Dark Cloud. Dark Cloud on the PS2. And are going to wrestle at the ranch next weekend? I sure am. I'm wrestling Friday and Saturday nights. I uh, the, the the script keeps changing though, so every day I kind of look at the chat and I'm like, oh, now I'm not wrestling in this match. I'm wrestling in this match. Cool. Sure wish the script would stay the same. Not at all butthurt about this, Ron. I'm I'm going to be very excited. I'm going to come in. I'm going to do my job, and I'm going to wrestle. And I am wrestling Friday and Saturday nights. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to seeing all my professional wrestler brothers and sisters that I love so much. That's going to be great. Um, I heard there's a special guest referee, referee that, ooh, now I'm very excited. Not to derail, but hello, everyone. As for the topic, dang, that's a hard one. Alec Yon, hello, my friend. Um, there's the Friday night show is in Reedsburg. The Saturday night show is in Baraboo. No. Uh, yeah, I think so. It's uh, Circus City Chaos. And then uh, Butterfest Brawl or something like that. What's up, Alec? Hello, my friend. It's been a it's been a minute since we talked to you. You are always absolutely welcome to derail as much as you'd like. I love you guys. You're here, and it's always a welcome to see you guys and see your faces that I can't see, but I can smell them. Is that weird that I know you guys by your your screen names and I can smell your faces? And I can smell your voices because you got to brush your teeth and take a mint. I'm kidding. Um. But I think a world that I would like to be stuck in, I think, would be E8. I love when Josh gets railed. Thank you. You can smell our face. I can smell your faces. Ring Fit, I'm going to be smelling your face up close tomorrow. Because we're going to work on some tech issues that I have with this very stream tomorrow. Can you believe it? But, um, yeah, uh, this podcast will be going live on Podomatic at some point. We'll also have this actual video being available on our Facebook. So if you want to watch this over again, uh, go ahead. Absolutely. Everyone should feel free to watch this at their own at their own risk. Watch at your own risk or listen at your own risk um, because uh, we do enjoy having them available for video for later or for audio for later as well. So you're able to <laughs> – please don't smell his face. Um, Chrono Cross would be tight too. Chrono Cross. Oh, shit. Are we going to go there? We're going to go there? Smell at your own risk. That's hilarious. Um. But uh, for real, we're going to, will you tell me the story of what happened if I see you next weekend? I will absolutely tell you the story of what happened. I'll tell you any story you'd like to hear. Pay the toll. I will gather around the chairs for an anecdote. 
or anything you'd like to hear. And I'm very excited. I can't wait to see you. Uh, You're one of my favorite people on the planet. I'm not kidding. Like you are an amazing human being. You put my suspenders on better than anyone has ever done before. Let's fucking go. So, all right. Thank you guys for listening. And I'll also smell your face. Chrono Cross is a good game. Ah, can we get Jay to bring strippers? Well, we're derailing the conversation now. Um, Chrono Cross, is it a good game? Um, I don't have a lot of experience with it. Matter of fact, Ring Fit Runner has been pushing me like uh, crazy to play Chrono Trigger, which is a game I've never played through, ever. I have played it. I've gone almost 10 hours into it, loved it, but for some reason, something always stops me from finishing it. I don't know what keeps happening. Maybe I need to Twitch stream it. I know, I know I need to stream it. I will get to it eventually. Um, but when I, when Chrono Cross was coming out and everyone was so fucking hyped about it, uh, I knew a couple friends who had loved Chrono Trigger. And when they sat down and played Chrono Cross, the first five minutes into it, they're like, this is shit. And I'm like, it looks just like Final Fantasy. And they're like, yeah, it's shit. And it's like, it just didn't play like Chrono Trigger. It just played like a Final Fantasy game. It was like they were starting to make a Final Fantasy game got bored, added a couple game development ideas into it, and they're like, here you go. And it just, it just didn't, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm taking advice from other people. I don't know. I'm just saying it didn't feel like Chrono Trigger, and that's what I wanted. Chrono Trigger has a very different vibe to it from Final Fantasy. Chrono Trigger has almost a look and a feel of like a secret of mana with a turn-based battle system. Chrono Cross just looked like Final Fantasy. Right? Am I, am I wrong here? Like, what's so different about it? Time travel? Okay, cool. Was Final Fantasy with time travel? Cool. Chrono Trigger was different. Chrono Trigger felt different. Chrono Trigger had a different battle system. Chrono Trigger looked different. Chrono Trigger was like a step up from everything. Final Fantasy knew what it was. Final Fantasy had its own shtick. Chrono Trigger had its own shtick. Chrono Cross came in and it was like, ah, what are we doing? Once you want to get into the system... That's how Pickle Friction sounds. When he starts calling in and he starts doing these things, he's gonna be like, Hey everybody, my name's Pickle Friction. I'm gonna talk I'm gonna talk about all these things. Here we go. Let's look at all my jewel cases. I replaced all my jewel cases. I'm Pickle Friction. Yeah, we get it, Pickle Friction. I'm kidding, by the way. Pickle Friction is one of the coolest people on the planet. You guys should all follow him and also find him on YouTube. <laughs> he's the Portal Pals. Find the Pickle Friction streams on Portal Pals Discord. Like, all that shit. He does really, really, really fun content. One of my favorite videos of his, and it's maybe I'm saying this because I was in it, but he and I stayed up one night playing uh, Fightcade. He has a very light and airy voice. He's got a very light voice. Uh, you talk funny, Pickle Friction. Ow, Owly, what's up, my friend? Dude, Owly, if I... <laughs> Don't follow me. Auli, I've uh, been meaning to send you messages on here. Um, on like, If I sent you a voice message on Facebook asking you the question of the day, would you answer it and send it back to me in a voice message, and I'll play it on this stream? I know that I'm way off the rails on everything right now, but um, we're going to end this quick, I promise you. But I want to thank you guys all so much. I'm a, I'm a pretty lady. You can always dance with me on the pretty lady show. So sexy. All right. Cool. That's fucking awesome. So next week, probably Monday or Tuesday, I'll send out a message to you, and it'll be just whatever the question of the day is that week. Um, and then uh, that'll be the lucky number 13 question of the day because this was the number 12th. This is the 12th week we've done question of the day on Thursday nights. It's been a blast. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you guys so much for being a part of it. Love you guys all. And we will talk to you in a week with next week's question of the day. But da 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 da